Hey everybody. Today we're talking about sampling distributions of statistics. The whole point of statistical inference is to use sample statistics to estimate population parameters. The trouble is that sample statistics are almost always variable. In other words, if you do the same sort of sample repeatedly, you're probably going to get different values for the same statistic. Here's what I'm talking about. A bag contains a collection of numbered chips. A board statistician, statistician draws 5 at random, getting 24, 11, 10, 14, and 16, for a sample mean of x bar equals 15. Now, if they do that process repeatedly, they're probably going to get different values for x bar every time. Here we have a sample mean of 17.8, here 18.8, and here 21.6. So this statistic is going to end up being a number that is a result of a random process. In other words, the statistic, in this case x bar, is itself a random variable. And it's going to have a probability distribution, a description for all the possible values that it could take and their probabilities. When we're talking about a sample statistic, we call that probability distribution the sampling distribution of the statistic. Let's work through a full um, uh, concrete example. A bag contains three red chips and six blue ones. Three are drawn at random with replacement. Find the distribution, I'm sorry, the sampling distribution of x, the number of red chips drawn. So here there are four possibilities for x, 0, 1, 2, or 3, the number of red chips we draw in three tries. By the way, notice that x is a statistic. Um, we are doing a sample, and then x is going to be a number describing that sample, the number of red chips we draw. To get the probability distribution, I'm sorry, the sampling distribution for x, we need to find the probability that x is 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so for any individual sample, we're doing three draws. Each of the three draws is going to be identical and have only two possible outcomes red or blue. We're going to view red as success and blue as failure. We're talking about Bernoulli trials here. We're doing three um, identical draws with the same probability um, each time. When we talk about the total number of successes in three trials, we're talking about a binomial distribution. In this case with n equals 3 and p equals 1 third because there are three red chips out of nine total. Three ninths is 1 third. So we can use what we know about the binomial distribution to compute probabilities, like, for example, the probability that x equals 0. Here, we need three failures, each which has probability of 2 thirds. We need zero successes with probability 1 third. And we have three choose zero ways of arranging those successes and failures. Overall, the probability that x is 0 is 0.296. We compute the probabilities that x is 1, 2, and 3 exactly the same way. For example, the probability that x equals 1 is going to require us to multiply 2 thirds squared, we need 2 failures, 1 third to the first, we need 1 success, and multiply that by 3 choose 1, the number of ways we can arrange the 2 failures and 1 success. So here we have the 4 possible values for x along with their probabilities, the probability distribution of that random variable. Since it's a statistic, we call this the sampling distribution of x. By far the most commonly used statistic for statistical inference is the mean. And so you'll see the phrase, the sampling distribution of the sample mean, quite frequently. It's just the probability distribution of all the possible values that that sample mean can take over all possible samples of the same size from the same population. Here's an example. Suppose in our original example that that bag contained chips that were numbered from 1 to 35, one chip each. Let's describe the sampling distribution of the sample mean, x bar, when we're doing samples of size n equals 5. Here, we'll do the samples without replacement. In other words, don't put the chips back in the bag when you're drawing that sample of size 5. We've already seen several values that x bar can take. 15, 17.8, and so on. Now imagine repeating that process a thousand times, drawing five um, chips from the bag, taking the sample mean, 
putting them back, doing it again, again, and again. We're going to get a thousand different sample means, a list of a thousand numbers. Each one is going to be between 15 and 165. 15 if we get the um, five smallest chips, 165 if we get the five largest chips. Now obviously those are pretty unusual occurrences, so we expect most of our sample means to be somewhere in the middle of the range. Once we have those thousand sample means, we can describe the sampling distribution by, for example, making a histogram. So here we are. In this case, it looks roughly like a bell curve. And we'll see in a future video that this isn't a coincidence. Now the sampling distribution of the sample mean, x bar, has a very predictable center and spread. And this is going to make a lot of statistical inference possible. Suppose we're drawing samples of size n from a large population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Then the mean of the sample mean is going to be mu. In other words, the sample mean on average is going to be the same as the population mean. The standard deviation of the sample mean is going to be the population mean divided by the square root of n. In words, this is saying that the sample mean has the same center um, as the distribution being sampled from, but it's less variable. One technical note here. Um, technically, these equalities are true when the sampling is done with replacement when um, it is possible to draw the same person or individual or object from the population multiple times in a single sample. If the population is large, however, um, it doesn't particularly make a difference to the probabilities whether you do it with replacement or without replacement. Um, here's a full example. The mean score in a standardized test is 1060, and the standard deviation is 195. Suppose 100 students are chosen at random. In this case, we'll assume it's a large population, so it's okay if it's not done with a replacement. The sampling distribution of the sample mean has center 1060 and standard deviation 19.5. The way that we're understanding this is, go out and collect a sample of 100 students and take their average test score. Do it again, 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 and again, and again, and again. On average, that sample mean is going to be 1060. The spread of that sample mean, the standard deviation, is going to be 19.5. It's going to be substantially less than the standard deviation of individuals from within that population.